Britain just recently discovered that Communist China is taking advantage of the pandemic as hundreds of independent British schools are facing financial difficulties. This past Saturday, the Daily Mail reported that Chinese companies have been targeting British private schools to expand their global influence. China already owns 17 British private schools, and more may be coming. Nine of the 17 schools are owned by individuals who are China's most senior Communist Party members. China's Bright Scholar, founded by the CCP's highest-ranking advisory council member Yang Guoqiang, owns four British private schools. Wanda Group, a Chinese company well known for its aggressive overseas investment takeover, bought Best Stone College and Ipswich High School. Wanda was founded by Wang Jianling, a former Chinese army soldier and a member of China's Senior Communist Party Advisory Council. By the way, his company also owns American movie chains AMC Theatres, British luxury yacht manufacturer Sunseeker, Australian cinema chain Hoyts, and Hollywood production house Legendary Entertainment. England's Adcott School for Girls and Middleton College in Wales were bought by Ray Education Group, a Chinese firm that claims on its website that the investments in UK schools is to implement China's Belt and Road Initiative for global expansion. Chinese firms started showing interest in overseas education assets as early as 2012. The first purchase of a British private school took place in 2014 when a Chinese company bought the English Chase Grammar School. In the following year, Hailiang Education became the first Chinese K-12 school system formally listed in the U.S. stock market. By 2017, Chinese investors have snapped up education assets around the world, from an education technology firm in Singapore to a professional training company in France to private schools in the UK and America. Meanwhile, scores of Chinese education companies came to the US to raise capital. Between 2017 and 2018, at least six Chinese education companies publicly traded on US stock markets. During the same time, Chinese firms also aimed to take over large international education companies Chinese state-owned Citic Capital unsuccessfully bid for a Sydney-based study group, an international education provider that prepares international students for universities. Citic also sought to buy Wall Street English, one of the largest English language education providers in the world, which was established by the Italian Luigi Tiziano in 1972. At the same time, Bright Scholar was among other Chinese bidders to buy Learning Care Group, an American child care and early childhood education company operating over 900 schools in North America. The sale didn't go through, but can you imagine 900 schools under Chinese communist control? On February 23, 2019, China's State Department and the central leadership of the CCP issued China's strategic tasks for the next 15 years in the education sector. It's called China's Education Modernization 2035. One of the policies in this document is to accelerate building international schools overseas that maintain Chinese characteristics. I think the Chinese characteristics here mean communist characteristics. In addition to schools in the UK, China has been buying private schools and campuses in the United States as well. In 2015, Jiahui Education paid $1.5 million to buy the campus of Chester College, a private liberal arts college in New Hampshire that was closed in 2012. The Chinese buyer turned it into Bush Academy, the first school catering to Chinese students seeking a high school education in the U.S. In the same year, a non-for-profit 
affiliated with a Chinese real estate website, bought Donald Trump's boarding school. The New York Military Academy, one of the oldest military schools in the U.S. with history of 130 years, was sold for $16 million in an auction. In 2011, the same Chinese company had bought the nearby Arden Estate, which is a National Historic Landmark and the former estate of U.S. diplomat and politician Avril Harriman. In 2017, Ambo Education, a Chinese company that was delisted by New York Stock Exchange for violation of reporting compliance, bought Bay State College, a private career-focused college in Boston. Also in 2017, Xinhua Education Investment Corporation bought the 135-acre vacated campus of St. Paul's College, a historically black university and college in Lawrenceville, Virginia, that was bankrupt in 2013. And in December 2017, Primvera Capital, a Chinese-based private equity firm, paid about $500 million for the Stratford school system, which operates K-8 schools throughout California with 25 campuses. In the same month, Florida Preparatory Academy was sold to a Chinese education company, New Open Group. In 2018, Shandong Kewen Investment Group bought the International Academy of New York, a K-8 private school on Manhattan's Upper East Side. As Chinese firms were snapping up American schools, they also met with resistance from the local communities. Westminster Choir College is a very select music conservatory in Princeton, New Jersey. Founded in the 1920s, it was put up for sale a couple of years ago by its parent school, Ryder University. In the fall of 2017, a Chinese company made an offer of $56 million. The Westminster community was concerned that the Chinese company, Kaiwen, had only two years of experience in running a for-profit K-12 school in Beijing. More alarmingly, the company is partly owned by the Beijing municipal government. Westminster's alumni and donors sued Ryder University over concerns that an authoritarian foreign government will be running an American institution of higher learning on U.S. soil. Ryder University eventually dropped the plan to sell Westminster. And another really interesting story is related to the University of Connecticut. In 2016, Weiming Education Group, which owns 42 schools with 40,000 students in China, offered $12.6 million to buy the 58-acre West Hartford campus from Yukon. However, the proposed sale attracted concern in the community because a similar program that the same Chinese company ran in Michigan was under investigation by the Department of Homeland Security for its handling of students' visas. Local Connecticut residents also questioned the sale of public school properties to a foreign company. The sale fell apart eventually. Two years later, however, Yukon sold its campus to another Chinese company, the Seven Stars Cloud Group, for $5.2 million. The company's owner, Bruno Wu, said that his company uses artificial intelligence and other technology to create cloud-based ledgers for traders and businesses. He also claimed that he would move the company headquarters to Hartford to build a new global think tank there. Connecticut's Democratic governor at the time, Daniel Malloy, was reportedly involved in the deal. I don't know if the University of Connecticut and Governor Malloy knew that Bruno Wu has unusual ties with the Chinese Communist leaders. The exiled Chinese billionaire whistleblower Miles Guo claimed that Bruno Wu and his celebrity news anchor wife Yang Lan are both CCP spies. 
Now, Miles Gore has been called controversial, maybe because he's a whistleblower, or maybe because some of the things he said cannot be verified, or maybe he has other agenda. Regardless, it's public knowledge that Bruno Wu and his wife are very close to the communist regime's top leadership and are involved in their business investments. I don't know how people in Connecticut would feel about a Chinese who is so close to the communist leaders running a global think tank using artificial intelligence on the campus of their public school. Some say that we shouldn't let communist China buy up American schools and other education assets. Others argue that this is a free market, so if the Chinese come with money, why not let them have it? Well, if a Chinese company is listed on our stock market, then technically, its funds are our money. So my question is this, does it make sense for the Chinese to come to the U.S. and use our capital to buy our education assets, only to turn them into communist Chinese-style schools? Let me know what you think. Leave me comments. Don't forget to share and like my videos. Stay tuned. More will come. I'll see you next time.